I thought uh, I was really happy with the way we played last night, and I, I thought we just continued it tonight. The difference being we were able to get to their goalie quickly tonight, and our goaltending. Uh, and we didn't really give up a lot, but we had solid goaltending tonight. Um, very. Uh, we got a lot of milestones this year. It's always great to win your last game of home ice, but it's really rewarding to be able to take your team to the your league championships. Uh, I've done it before as a coach, and it's a really special time. So I'm, I'm really excited for this group to be able to experience this. Uh, when we lost last year at Northeastern in the quarterfinals, um, as soon as that game was over, the kids decided next year we're, we're making it there. And, um, and they've had that goal all year long. And we'll go, out, we'll go into Boston this weekend uh, with a plan to win the whole thing. We won't just be happy to be there. But this weekend was, uh, to me, a real statement weekend. Uh, the UConn game, I wasn't happy with the guys, but for uh, however many minutes we played this weekend, the guys were, out, were outstanding. And it's not, it's not always easy to play uh, with a 6 nothing lead to play the right way. And we challenged the guys after the second period and the third period, we, we played accordingly and, and, and put the game away as we should have. Um, uh, UNH, I give, uh, they're a very well coached team. And, and Coach Souza has done a great job this year in, in that program. They're going to be. They're going to come around quickly. You can tell. You can tell a good coach when you play. When you when you play against the team, and he's done a great job. Um, the 85-minute game last night, I think, played to our favor. I think, uh, as a road team, it's tough to recover when you're not at at home. So that was an advantage for us, and it's probably a big reason why we were able to win the way we did today. But uh, we were able to solve their goalie pretty quickly tonight. That was uh, extremely beneficial. That depth at the no, we, we had one four that was a little banged up after last night, and uh, we didn't know how well he was going to be able to play today, and so we just wanted to have that security if we needed an extra four. We've talked a lot this, over the past month or so about Boeing kind of being on the precipice of kind of scoring a goal. I think it's been two months since he scored, so from the young Two months yeah. since Boeing scored? Yeah. I'm just going to hear about tonight. that. <laughs> um, so, I mean, just bring the, the gun, the, the score sheet twice. You just feel like it was kind of the, it was going to come eventually for him? I guess it had to eventually, two months. Um, I really, I said this, I think I've said this to the media, I say it to the team. I think Brett Bowen and Jake McLaughlin are the two difference makers on our team. When they're good, we're a really good hockey team. When those two guys, because we have a lot of consistent, solid players. But when your third line center and your fifth defenseman become difference makers in the game, we become really dangerous. And so, you know, he scores tonight, and Jake McLaughlin's been good for us lately. But Bo's, Bo's a really critical piece to me. I, I believe that. Uh, I thought we, I thought we got off to a great start this year because he was he played really well at the beginning of the year, and he was surprised. He was a fourth line player here for two years, and he forced us to make him the third line center, and he's held that all year long and. He's had some inconsistency, but um, like you said, tonight he's able to score, and that's that's huge for us. Last night you talked about how good of a team you may, uh, UNH was on, on the rush, um, and tonight it seemed like they really struggled to get that part of their game going. What did you guys do differently that really took away one of their big strengths? We, the guys followed the game plan a little better. We, we had a – they are very effective up jump, jumping up the ice, and, and we had a – Planned it to deal to deal with it last night, and we just didn't, and they scored. So we showed the same video today, and the guys did a very good job today doing that. With the positionally, I thought we did a great job preventing them um, from getting speed up the ice. Talked about the importance of getting that first goal um, heading into this series in, in a game. You get the first one on the power play tonight. You think that kind of just adds to the, the overall importance of that first goal when it comes on the end. Yeah, the, the first goal is so important. And as I always say, it's usually the team that's ready to play that scores the first goal, and then that just carries through mostly the 60 minutes. So we we were ready to go tonight. We were ready to go last night. We 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 deserved. Uh, I thought we deserved to score in the first period last night. We had a lot of chances, but that was that's a big boost when your power play can go out there, and uh, that's one of the more effective PKs that we've dealt with this year. So when they they make that nice tic-tac-toe play, and Kale snaps it in the back of the net. That's a real, a real boost. And especially after last night, when it took us uh, 
almost 40 minutes to score our first goal, to score that quickly into the game that um, I think our, our bench got got uh, juiced up pretty much off of that. Billy Lindbergh didn't face a lot of shots over the time that he played, but he made every save <coughs> absolutely prima donna the way that he played, particularly not getting a ton of time for you guys with the inconsistency this season. For, I'm sorry. Uh, just, uh, just, sorry. What did you think of the way he performed tonight, particularly with holding the lead? Yeah. Um, I had a similar question, well, a question last night about was I concerned about throwing him in in the middle of the game and that he went stretches without shots. He's a very, he's a he's a goalie that when you see every day what he brings every day he's he's as consistent as anybody on our team and what he brings. And so whatever, I think I said this last night, whatever is thrown at him, I, I uh, I'm very comfortable. He can go, you know, 20 minutes without a shot and then get a breakaway and, and it doesn't it doesn't matter. He's He's a he's a gamer. He's a tremendous kid. He's a high high character kid, and uh, happy he's got an opportunity. And he's been waiting all year, and for the door to open for him. And he took advantage of it tonight. And like I said, he didn't, he didn't have a lot, um, a lot of action, um, but you know he took care of business and he got a shutout. So it's good for it's good for our team. Coach, if this is Kale's farewell to the Mullen Center. How would you characterize it? Uh, might, might start crying. <laughs> he's 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 outstanding. He's a, he's a, it's as a coach as as I've said this before. If you, you if you're a hockey purist, you love to watch him play. This his skating ability, his uh, his compete, his vision. His he's a complete player and he's a. Tremendous kid, and it's uh, he had three points tonight. It was plus three, and um, you know if, if this is his farewell song, uh, he went out, you know the team and him uh, on a high, on a high note. We've we've been so fortunate to have him. Uh, I, I feel extremely fortunate to, to coach him, um, and as good a hockey player is that, not I don't know how many kids match that kind of hockey skill with that kind of character and humbleness and just the whole package and uh, I, I feel very fortunate to have had the opportunity to coach him. And finally you, you know, you've got this reputation, the three-year plan. How important was having your AD Ryan on board with everything that you've tried to accomplish? Uh, I don't know if I ever had a three-year plan. Um, well, it's working for you. Yeah. Historically. Yeah. I, I came here and just did the same things I did in my previous job. You you uh, you hire good people. You want to work for good people, and and Ryan Bamford is a great person to work for. My chancellor is a great person to work for. When you have leadership above you that you believe in, it really makes it really helps. If you ever feel like the leadership above you is not pulling for you, it's a huge difference. And uh, a big part of the reason I took this job is because of those two gentlemen. Um, and you sit down with Ryan, he's just the charisma and the power and the energy that he has and the positive energy he brings to the room. Um, and the same with our chancellor. You know, when those two guys walk in the room, the, the temperature goes up a little bit. And that's, that's really comforting for me as a coach um, to know that's, that's what's leading the charge. Um, and, and we've worked well together um, building this program. It was really a mess when we got here. Every every last square inch of it was, and and it's taken a lot of people. I, my staff is outstanding, outstanding. My staff from top to bottom, the, the eight or nine guys that that work together, um, I can't I can't praise my staff enough. As as good of as Kale McCarr as Mario Ferraro and and Mitchell Chafee, it wouldn't this wouldn't happen if if my staff wasn't as good as as it is, and and they don't get any recognition. They all, but they come every day, and they do unbelievable job, and I'm I'm very grateful for my staff too. Coach, uh, the uh, last seven games was it just that it's this time of year and you, every team sort of fans up defensively, or have you noticed something that you guys are doing well defensively to be able to, you know, protect those shots for for 60 minutes? Well, we've had two shutouts and then two games where we've given up four goals, so we got it. You know. We, 
we've, as you know, we've really focused on being a good defensive team. And part of that's getting good goaltending. And I, and I, I honestly think the two games we gave up four goals, I've praised my goalies all year. And I just need to be honest, like they needed to be better in those games. And I think the teams played very well in front of them. And whoever, whoever plays in net in Boston, we need them to be on the top of their game um, because defense wins championships. And we can't give up four goals in Boston and think we're going to win a game. So um, it's been our focus, and we'll continue to, to, uh, to, to preach it. And, you know, this is a wonderful time of year because your players are completely locked in, and they have been all year. Like, this group's outstanding, just how easy it is to coach them. Um, so I'm excited. I'm, again, I'm, I'm really excited that, that, that we're all going to get rewarded with this experience that this program hasn't had, hasn't been to Boston in 10 years. Um, but again, it's, the, it's these experiences um, that we'll, you remember. And then beyond that, you know, we, we've secured an NCAA game. I've never coached an NCAA game. I, I'm, I'm excited for that experience too. And, uh, you know, right now our, our kind of mantra is, uh, you know, let's make sure we don't regret anything. Let's really appreciate what we're going through. Let's, let's make sure we're we're taking it all in, and, and we make the most of it. So, uh, only uh, one loss here at Mullins all season. Um, was it was that an important accomplishment for you to make it a hard place for uh, opponents to come here and play? Yeah, yeah. You you want <clears throat> as a coach, you want to win every home game and, and win half your road games. If you do that, you're in, you're in real good shape, and that's what we did this year. Even the one game we lost, you know tight game that you know could have, could have went our way um, but that's what good teams do you, you you make home ice extremely difficult place to play and, and our kids do that because they combine a good physical style with a really creative offensive ability to use the big ice and um, that's what we've done all year and I take a lot of pride in that I I, I like it's been great knowing that fans are going to come out to game and they're going to go home happy and because the team played well and, and won and won. So it's been a lot of fun seeing the building full. They're, you know, close to full. Um, it's been a lot of fun feeling the pride around campus, um, around Amherst. And uh, it's, it's been an ext extremely rewarding year. And um, winning at home every night has been awesome. Yeah, we really wanted to focus on just getting that first one today and getting that momentum. But um, no, I credit, uh, I think that was on the power play. Um, we were moving it pretty well and everything was uh, moving pretty efficiently tonight. Fred, in two, two months since you, you scored a goal, uh, I guess, how does it feel to finally get one uh, by a goalie? Feels pretty good. Uh, had plenty of chance the last couple of games uh, at the Barry, and um, feels good to get one, in the, especially the last home game here. I'd say seem like these past couple of weeks you've had you've had some some chances did, did it feel like eventually one of them was, was finally gonna go in for you yeah for sure uh, talking to coaches lately um, they've been wanting me to, to finish my chances harder um, work on in practice and unfortunately I worked today you guys think you fed off how last night ended into the start yeah I think we just want to come out with a little extra oomph in our game um, at the end of the day it was just uh, I think we we're a little lazy at the beginning um, in the first period, uh, first night, but the, today we really focused on just being able to come out and really force them to uh, make plays in towards our system. So, Brett, you and your class have seen the program through a lot of different stuff and a lot of new teams. What does it mean to you that you get to go play at TD Garden and you're trying to win the championship for the team? It's pretty special. I mean, uh, I said in the locker room before, uh, right after the game, uh, when I came in here, I didn't win one home game here. And uh, to go like that and uh, pretty convincing win is, was pretty special for the seniors. I know uh, Keith is pretty emotional in the locker room, uh, as well as me. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool to, to move on and, and see where this program's going. You mentioned you, know, you didn't win a single home game your first year. Now, you guys will only lose once here uh, this year. What, what was it about this arena that it kind of took a brought out the best in your, in your game this year? I think just the energy. Um, whenever we play here, we know uh, we know what to bring. Um, guys feel comfortable here. Um, we, have, we have a lot of energy from the fans, like I said, and it, it's easy to get up for games when we have when support from the fans. Thank you. Thank you.
coach, shout out for you guys in the past seven games. So what's been different for you guys that you've been able to play those full 60 minutes defensively and, and complete the shutout? Yeah, I think um, just consistently defensively. Um, we focused a lot on practice, just coming into every game and not wanting to give up any uh, key scoring chances. And I think we're cracking down on it, but we can still get a little better. But I think tonight it showed that um, we're really focusing on that. Um, it's going to depend on who we play, obviously. I think uh, in terms of systematics and stuff like that, it's just um, being able to cycle the pucks low for forwards especially. Um, that's a really key part to our game and them uh, using a lot of cutbacks for, on opponents. So um, definitely that, but we'll see who we play. Right, I think UNH had eight or nine power plays over these two games. We had only two shots on them. What did you guys do so well on the PK this weekend to not give them many uh, opportunities? Uh, going into the weekend, um, we know they have a strong power play. Our biggest thing was uh, putting a lot of pressure on them so they can't get uh, set up and, and feel comfortable. Um, I think you saw that uh, on all their breakouts, um, we were able to put pressure on them and then we were forced to fourth jumps and we were able to get clears pretty quick and not let them set, them up, set up. And we, we know how dangerous UNH can be on these rushes. I mean, was the difference tonight just simply you guys following that, that game plan just that little bit better to not let them get those chances on the rush? Yeah, I think so. I think we, we definitely um, focused on a few different things, changed up the game plan a little bit, but um, I think just coming in, we knew we, we, what we need to focus on, and um, our forward's really good coming back on the back check, especially tonight, and I think that helped a lot, uh, helped a lot on the rush. Kayla, how do you guys uh, carry this momentum going into the weekend? Yeah, I think just for us, this is over and done with now. We're on to a new stage, and it's going to be a fun experience for us. Um, most Obviously, uh, this entire team hasn't been to a semifinal game before, so um, we're going to take it all in and just kind of prepare for who, who, we are, who we're going to play. I got a couple of questions. Um, can you talk about the sentiment leaving Moen Center tonight? I thought maybe you picked up a little bit of ice, and uh, you know, just who knows what the future holds. But is there any special sentiment leaving the ice? Yeah, obviously, at the, at the end of any season at the Mullen Center, it's just it's a little bit different. And obviously, you feel so much for these senior guys here, especially Bo and Keatsy, and guys that have been through this program and been through everything. And, and seeing those guys in the room after, a little bit emotional is pretty special as well. Yeah, Jimmy Vesey, when he won the Hobie in 2016, he said his biggest accomplishment was being at Harvard when the culture sort of changed. You've been through a real sea change here. It's all pointing up. Uh, how important is that to you? Very important. I think just having a great group of guys here and knowing that um, they're going to come to the rink every day and work as hard as we can. And the culture just is going up and up, and it's going to continue that for years to come. And finally, just, um, you know, uh, the second year, you coming here the second year, how important has that been to you in your development? I know you've spoken briefly about that. Yeah, personally, I think it's a very key step in my development. Um, I chose to come back second year because I felt there were things in my game that I needed to tweak, and I, I think I've gotten to a stage where I feel um, I'm consistent with most of those things now. But.